What's going on fellas? Today we're gonna to take a look at a little feature that I talked about during the construction of this hydrogen torch, and that is my ultrasonic transducer. Now basically what's inside of there is one of these little piezoelectric uh, transducers. It's hooked up to a ultrasonic driver, and these come out of the uh, humidifiers you see in a house. Unfortunately, the only one that I have that works is like seven watts, and that's miserable. We want to be at at least 25 watts, but at any rate, we are going to observe the effects of turning this thing on while the torch is running. And before I get started, I just want to mention that I'm not doing this thinking something amazing or strange is going to happen. The only purpose I'm using this ultrasonic transducer is for the consolidation of micro bubbles because I want to reduce and train flow. Nothing else. I'm not into none of that crazy HHO stuff. I want a torch that works good and I don't want a bunch of bubbles in my radiator because that reduces the effectiveness of the cooling significantly if the entrained flow becomes significant. So let's get on with it. Okay, so let's just go ahead and start the experiment. First thing I'm going to do is turn on the pumps. Or the pump, I should say. I use plural because there's a quad with a discharge there. I'm going to turn them down to the level that I think the electrolyte can not kick off. And uh, I'm going to start off slow on the electrolyzer so as not to kick off the pump triac. Cranking it up to about uh, 200, now we're at 500 watts. That's at about 1,000 watts right there. A lot of bubbles are pumping through my radiator, which is reducing the effectiveness of it. A lot of bad stuff is going on right now. I am going to go ahead and turn on the ultrasonic transducer driver to full power. I'm not going to mess around with it. And let's try and observe the benefits of this setup. We want to make sure we have flow going through the radiator somewhat slowly. As you can see now, my water pump is no longer being just battered with a large entrained flow. The entrained flow causes uh, inefficiencies in the electrolyzer and as well as the radiator. Okay, that's at uh, 1200 watts. Go ahead and light that torch up so we ain't just gassing the place out. More than let all the air out of the bubbler first. Give me a little shot of how much gas discharge that is. Nice little bit of gas. But as you can see, uh, that ultrasonic transducer has consolidated the bubbles significantly. And now, take note of the line level there. I just um, definitely uh, see a lot of advantage to this technique. So let's uh, back out of this scenario by shutting down the ultrasonic transducer and observe the shortcomings of not having installed this device. Okay, the ultrasonic transducer, transducer's been shut down and immediately the pump is being uh, subjected to significant entrained flow. This also causes problems up top. We're at 12 amps now because the cell's warming up. That's 1300 watts of current. I'm now gonna switch on the ultrasonic transducer. I'm just barely turning it on. Barely touched it. Okay, now I'm gonna turn it up all the way to see if we can observe the attenuation. I'm gonna turn it down. It's turned down all the way right now. Okay, here we go. The dome's coming down. I can't really see it. How about we do that? Now that the pumps have been turned up, the ultrasonic transducer is not on high. I just wanted to see if this little driver was affecting it. Okay, I'm turning it all the way up. Almost instantly we get some activity. However, it does appear to be still getting overcome due to the high flow rate of the pumps right now. So I'm going to turn those down just a touch. And then that right 
right there should produce everything. Oh, hold on, our transducer is shut down. We have a very precarious uh, trigger system down here because I had to modify this thing. So that kind of sucks. We had a failure there. Kind of botched the test. And that kind of goes along with what I was saying of needing a stronger driver. That was a concern of mine. So that's about 14 amps right there. We're gonna hover right there a minute. Sometimes it takes a minute for that transducer to catch up if you overpower it. It'll do its thing eventually. Pay attention to the electrolyte level right now. We'll gradually see that increase back up to these reinforcement ridges. Actually, those are teeth for the wrench. I don't know that they're actually structural in any way, but sometimes I just say things that I really have no right to say. <laughs> Reinforcement ridges my ass. Those are for the wrench, dude. I can see the comments now. <laughs> they look like structural ridges at a glance, man. Bear with me. I tell you what, one thing I do like about the Texan hydroxide mix is the color of the flame that I get off the sport seems to be less contaminated. I don't know if it is. Perhaps there still is a large amount of potassium hydroxide. Well, at any rate, guys, I'm gonna turn it off, we're gonna toggle it, we're gonna watch it just lose itself. I really wish I had a stronger driver, and the problem is, I'm broke. My knee's messed up right now, I'm working like an animal. I do have a really good job coming up here real quick. I'll be making some of that coin. I sure ain't making it recording this crap. This is just what I'm doing on the side, fellas, so my channel doesn't die. Uh, a lot of guys like this stuff. I know I sure do. This uh, electrolyzer and this torch is the coolest thing I own. Check that out, man. So the ultrasonic transducer installation was a definite go. Definitely a well-advised decision. I've tried putting screens and a bunch of crap in there, but you don't understand how small some of them bubbles are. They pass right through some of the smallest screens. These are not your typical bubbles, guys. These are electrolysis bubbles. Some people even say that there's something in this stuff called nascent hydrogen and nascent oxygen, which means single atoms of the species. And those can be extremely small. They're obviously you're gonna make some really small bubbles when they consolidate initially. So we are making gas on the atomic scale here apparently, and the bubbles are just so small that none of the netting, none of the screens, none of that crap I've tried really works. It does not mitigate foam, however. Let's just uh, stress that right now. If you're wondering if this mitigates foam issues some of you have encountered, it does not. My conclusion with the foam is that you just need a really big reservoir. Something that's tall enough to let that foam just, it can only stack so high, could be one way of saying it. I've got that torch just chilling over there. Now, don't let this tip fool you. This is a specially uh, built tip that I made that reduces the length of the flame to make it more workable. If we didn't have this tip on here, this flame would be long, very long. Let me uh, give you an example of that real quick, actually. Okay, so what you're looking at there is a 14.7 amp flame. That's 1,200 watts of electricity that I'm using in total. That's not how much the cell is actually taken in, but... Okay, and as you can see with this tip, now, I know the camera's not picking it up, but that flame is three to four times longer. I mean, if you'd actually get anywhere near, look at that. Like you can't see it. You know, now, this tip is hard to manage. The flame is just so long that hey, there's even a huge feather you can't even see. Now, the camera probably won't pick this up, but... Actually, the camera can see it better than I can. To the naked eye, the flame's a little bit shorter. 
there's like a three, four inch invisible section. That is a pretty substantial flame gun. It's also quite a bit of power. I had to amp this up for that tip. The other tip wouldn't handle that current. There's almost 2,000 watts. They're at full power there. They will when this cell heats up a second. We'll go ahead and let it hit 2,000 watts and take a look at what a 2,000 watt flame looks like. We're currently at 115 degrees on the electrolyte. We need to do a little stress test for this cell. The ultrasonic transducer is on. I'm going to turn that bad boy off and see what happens. Let's see if that thing's any good, Bob. You and your bright ideas store 1980 is just about to hit 2,000 watts. There it is, guys, 2,022 watts. This thing is screaming. I quit blowing it around and get longer. Definitely huge. I'm really heating stuff up. There's one massive uh, oxyhydrogen flame. However, I'm blowing water like crazy. I gotta turn this thing off. Okay, so my puny little bubbler cannot handle the 2,000 watts. Okay, I wish I would have checked to see how many amps that was. Definitely, uh, Smells a little weird in here. <laughs> I don't know what's cooking. I smell it. Diode array is okay. Cool to the touch. I'm not gonna bother busting out the thermal gun, I don't think. Still making a little bit of gas. Oh, that is gone. So there you have it. Uh, I probably could have turned them pumps up a little bit more when we were running that high. I had too much going on at once. That would have been the ideal setup because what that would have done is knock down that foam that we see, that foam pile. That causes me a lot of problems. I have to use that secondary uh, basin that is a reservoir. Okay, you can see here we're a foamed up mess. A lot of that gets shot into that secondary catch. It doesn't become a problem. I'm gonna turn the pumps up. However, the problem with that is we get so much entrained flow, it kind of loses effectiveness. You hear that drag out? It's entrained flow pumping now. We no longer have the foam issue, but we've got an entrained flow issue. I switched on the ultrasonic transducer, and that's gonna help it a little bit, but if this little driver isn't powerful enough for that much bubble. That's going to help it some. But that's the objective of the ultrasonic transducer was to allow this pump to still work enough to knock those bubbles down. That's the theme of the story. I should have said that in the beginning and I did not. I'm basically an idiot in that regard. But uh, I'm going to light this torch. A lot of water in the line right now. It is not liking it. So I got to let that sit there do its thing for a while. Hovering at about uh, 700 watts, about 10 amps, 11 amps. I think something might have been wrong with my watt readings earlier. Could have swore I was at 1,000 watts. As you can see, that ultrasonic transducer does not have the power to uh, consolidate the bubbles at this kind of flow rate. Another thing about the foam and these electrolytes is the hotter that electrolyte gets, the more it wants to foam. So a radiator build a torch, do not forego that. I know there's a lot of guys online posting their builds and they don't have radiators and I'm going to tell you right now, you see the temperatures that I'm hitting. You don't want to be boiling steam out of this thing. You don't want to boil the water because your reservoir is going to evaporate quickly, first of all, which increases the amperage in the electrolyte. There's like a cascade uh, meltdown effect that happens. It's just a nightmare and it's just not well advised at all. I'm amazed that so many people build these torches and don't put cooling on them. It's insane. I go through drastic measures, not just to be a show off, but because you absolutely have to. I, I've had to build these when I didn't have the money to put radiators on them. 
when I see some of these thousand dollar builds or five thousand dollar builds no radiator so far so good guys no leaks on this thing uh, I think I'm ready to throw it together all the way 